sisters in Christ, blessed be you all. Blessed be we. That is probably grammatically correct, <laughs> although it does sound weird. Uh, good morning, gracious day to you all. Thank you for joining us here in the warmth, uh, in the, the goodness, the fellowship of this moment here in this house of the Lord on this Lord's day. It is a delight to be with you all. Grace and peace, yes. Okay, um, it is great to see you all, and thank you for visiting with us, those who are visiting today. This is a good day. I'm excited. Um, you have already, already known one reason why I'm excited, and that is because uh, John Scott, our new organist, is starting with us today. And um, so you've heard the organ at work already, uh, and I have a feeling you will hear it at least one more time. Okay, at least one more. Um, as you look in your bulletins, you will notice that there is the regular insert, of course. And in that regular insert is a big announcement for the Super Bowl, our Super Bowl, the Super Bowl of Caring, which is uh, doesn't have anything to do with football other than it coincides on dates. Um, so yes, our Super Bowl of Caring, we collect cans of soup that will be donated to Faces. Uh, we have done lots of hundreds of cans of soup in the past, and so we look to um, reach that and even surpass it. We've done that the last few years. We'll see what happens. So yes, bring the soup. Uh, you can just leave it out here on the table, on, on the floor, around the table in the fellowship hall, um, and then on the 11th, We'll have our soup lunch after the Super Bowl luncheon after church that day. So that'll be fun as well. And there will be some good, guess what, good soup. Soup, yeah, soup, yeah. Thank you. All right. And what else? Again, you know, grab your copy of These Days if you'd like to do the devotional, the church directory. And I noticed, uh, well, do, do um, make a note, uh, Janie Iron's phone number in the directory is incorrect. That's actually, the number that's in there, I think, is to the end of the avenues. And I think she's discontinued that line, and she's just using her cell phone. So that's not the land, that, that, I think that was the landline to her home. So make that change. That's the number for her if you need to reach her. And also, the nominating committee is meeting after church today. Um, if you want to say a prayer or two for them in their work of discernment, uh, you are welcome to. Uh, in Assuming things go okay, we should have a new church officer. Um, we all know, uh, and we will all continue to miss Carolyn for some time. And she was on the session right now. Well, she was in the session up to, this, up to her death. Um, so we will be voting on someone to fill her unexpired term of one year uh, in the coming weeks. So keep them in mind. Uh, the final thing I have for you is the session. Our elders is meeting, the, the group of the session is, is meeting uh, on Saturday, Saturday afternoon, next Saturday. And if you would like to help, this is one way that you might help. There is an insert in there, in the bulletin, an extra insert just for your thoughts. If you would like to offer some thoughts for us to consider as a group, you are welcome to do that. You can do it and leave it today. You can do it, take it home with you and bring it back sometime this week if you wish. If you wish, if you're an emailing kind of person and want to shoot us some answers by email, you can send it to the church office, whatever you want to do. Um, but we would need your answers back before Saturday, okay? So if you'd like to do them, if you'd like to answer one, any, all, whatever, give us whatever thoughts you have. That would be helpful. All right. Any other announcements? I think we're okay. Well, let's rejoice, friends, in the gift of this day as the people of God. Let us rejoice and give thanks for God is good, God is faithful. And God is love. <laughs>
as we continue in worship together, friends, we call upon the presence of God, upon the very Spirit of God. We call upon the Lord this day. Join with me in our call to worship in the bulletin. For God alone, my soul awakes in silence, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in Him. Trust in Him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balance they go up. They are together wider than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion, and set no vain hopes on robbery. <coughs> if riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. Let us join together in rejoicing in this day with our first hymn, Psalm 20, All Things Bright and Beautiful. If you're able to do so comfortably, I invite you to join me in standing. chosen, we have been loved, and we've also neglected all of those gifts as well. Let us not, however, leave ourselves in a state of despondence. Let us turn instead and um, 
let us turn back to the Lord and let us remember our care as God's people. Uh, join with me in our prayer confession in the bulletin, friends. As a people that knows how far we fall from your perfect love, O oh God, hear us, Holy One. Hear us as we struggle in times of cold and darkness. Hear us as we remember those things that we tremble to recall. Hear us as we hold our failures before us, the ways that we have failed you, our loved ones, our neighbor, and even our enemy. Hear us in our grief and regret. Hear us as we ask to be made clean and whole. Hear us, righteous Lord. Thank you for hearing us, God of love who is love. Thank you for receiving us as we are with all of our faults and problems. Thank you for loving us despite all that we have done and all that we will ever do. Thank you for loving us into new creations. Make us every day more like Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Oh, goodness, friends. Yes, it is good. It is truly, truly good to know the good news is not just some ancient historical thing, but it is with us today. The good news of God is for us all. Yes, in Christ Jesus, we are free to love and to give love, to be forgiven and to share forgiveness. We are free to be the children of God all together. Join with me in our assurance of pardon in the bulletin, friends, if we are bold to own this day. God's love comes to us in this new day. God's grace heals us in this new day. We rejoice in God's salvation in this new day. Thanks be to God for this new day. In Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. so good. <laughs> okay. Have you ever talked to God? Yeah. Really? How have you talked to God? Um, when it's accident, it lost. When what? Accident. Accident. Oh, oh, okay, I, I see what you're saying. Yes. You apologize to God. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, good for you. Now, has God ever talked to you? I don't think so. Hmm. That's a little trickier, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of easy for us to talk to God, and we believe that God hears us, Right? I mean, there's no point in talking to God if God doesn't hear us. So we believe that God hears us, right? Yeah. Right. But listening for God, trying to hear God, is a little trickier. 
Isn't it? Yeah, that's a little trickier. So, we're going to play a game. Okay? Come on up. We're going to play the telephone game. You know what the telephone game is? No? That's okay. What you're going to do is, uh, Miss Janice right here, you're going to go in and I'm going to say a message to Miss Scott over here. And then the message is going to go all the way down the line. And Miss Janice is going to tell you what the message is. And we'll see how good a job we do. Okay? All right. So you go on in there. Go, go join the choir. All right. You ready? You're on that end. That's right. I did hear her share it specifically. Was that Jesus welcomes all children, loves all children, and welcomes them home. What I said was Jesus loves all the children and welcomes them all to him. So it was pretty close. That was pretty close. You did a pretty good job there, Clara. Um, but did our message make it all the way across exactly the same? Yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't. Um, it did not make it all the way. And that's part of the problem. That's part of the challenge when we start to try to hear God, isn't it? Because other things get in the way. Um, one of the ways, one of the ways that we hear God, guess what? One of the ways that we hear God is right here. Did you know that? One of the ways that we hear God, one of the ways we hear God is through the music. Through the Psalms. One of the ways that we hear God is when we read and share the Scripture, when we read the Bible, and when we talk about God in the sermon. One of the ways that you hear about God specially is right here, like in the children's message. You might hear not only about God, but maybe God speaks to you. Maybe God tells you something that you need to know. And also, when um, we have children's church, that's another way that you might hear, hear from God. There are actually a lot of ways that we can hear from God, and that's a pretty important thing. Yeah, like saying please and, please and thank you. Those are important things to say and to hear as well. Um, is there anything that you would really like God to know right now? Try that. 
Wouldn't that be an interesting sermon? If we do, I, was, I could tell somebody the whole message <laughs> and then pass it down person by person and see at the end what it ends up being. I don't know. Okay, here's grumbling back here. All right, we won't do that. We won't do that. That's fine. Let's pray. Yes, Jesus, here we are in this place, in this time, seeking your goodness, seeking to hear. Make us open to hearing you. Make us open to hearing you, maybe in ways that we've never been before. But find us here, open and ready to receive your word. In your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. Uh, we are going to open up here. Our first lesson is from the prophet Jonah, chapter 3. Join with me, if you will, in your own Bibles. The few Bibles are simply in your hearing, but with see, receive with open hearts the Word of God. Jonah 3, 1 through 5, and then verse 10. The Word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord, my friends. Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, 
The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. I'm just going to say it. The disciples were idiots. At least that's what you would have said if you had been one of their family members back in the day when Jesus came around to invite them to leave their livelihood, their families, and any financial security or responsibility and follow him. Of course, some of you are nicer than I. Uh, your answer would be more like, are you sure, John, honey? <laughs> your family needs you right now. Your father's getting older and cannot do as much in the boat anymore. Or, that's a pretty big decision to make on such a short notice, Simon. Your family and wife are counting on that job to survive. The fish are not just walking out of the water into the frying pan. Now, seriously, I imagine that if your son or daughter was, say, a lineman with the power company, you know, a good blue-collar job, and was up on the pole one day fixing an issue, and Jesus walked up and invited them to leave it all behind, because he could show them what kind of light that never fails. And if your son or daughter had a family to support, you might have said something a little stronger than I in that kind of objection. Look, this is reckless behavior by any standard. Sure, the fishermen were following Jesus, okay? Yes, that's different. You might say following Jesus is more important than any job or family responsibility. I guess, maybe, uh, but they didn't really know who Jesus was. I mean, uh, they didn't know where this invitation would take them. They didn't know that we would still be feeling the ripples of their decision today and that this movement would change the world. Jesus was brand new, and their decision had to be unbiased. God did not make them do anything. That had to be their own crazy free choice. To their credit, they did make a choice that any of us would have been hard-pressed to make. So many people these days struggle to even go to church or to share their faith, let alone leave their families, their lives, and follow God on the road. Just the idea is enough to make you wonder. If there had been a, uh, you know, Rupert and his brother Humperdinck on the other side of Capernaum by the seashore, you know, when Jesus invited them to follow, they explained that they were right in the middle of a pretty hard day's work fishing and they couldn't really talk right now. You know, they turned Jesus down and they didn't even make the story. There could have been a row of fishermen working in the Sea of Galilee that day and they all turned Jesus down until he found our famous fishermen. We just don't know. What we do know is that when God speaks, things happen. 
That is what we've seen the last couple weeks between creation and Jesus' baptism. When Jesus speaks, lives change. This is one of the great questions for all people, all children of God. What does God have to say for you? What is the voice of Jesus saying to you? Historically, we have heard God <coughs> differently. We hear God in the Bible, of course. Some like to consider the Bible as God's literal word. What the Bible says is what God says, no more, no less. That's a bit tricky since so much of the world today is not referenced in the Bible. It makes the Bible feel a little less relevant and useful. Things have changed pretty dramatically in the last 2,000 years. So another idea is that we read the Bible today and interpret what God is saying through God's Spirit. And that's probably what most of us do. We read the Bible, right, for meaning and comfort and direction, but if Paul refuses women to speak in church in one passage and Jesus encourages women evangelists to share the gospel in another, it doesn't matter quite as much. Every passage in the Bible does not necessarily agree with every other passage in the Bible. It's a collection of human writings seeking to document what is most important about God. It is a telling of God's story in the world through Jesus given to us by human beings who also had their own ideas about things and it is written in a world that is completely alien to us. It doesn't mean it's any less meaningful, but we have to use our brains and our hearts when looking for the Word of God. That's why two faithful Christians can have different opinions on serious issues and both be relying on God's Word. Of course, it's my job to interpret the Bible every week, to try to bring some message from God, and that is no easy thing. Uh, frankly, it is a bit terrifying to even claim that role. <laughs> Thankfully, there's always something new to learn, and the longer I do this, the more I understand changes <laughs> And my understanding changes. Honestly, being here, being here with you, makes me hear the Word of God differently than I would anywhere else. And that is something that I never realized until working on this message today. You help me hear the voice of Jesus. But I am not the only one listening. You also have ears to hear, as Jesus likes to say. That means that if you are willing to listen, how the Spirit speaking, how is the Spirit speaking to you? And how is the Spirit spoken to you in the past? It's not an easy question, necessarily. And that's what Jonah found. The story of Jonah's encounter with God's voice is downright comical and tragic. At the sound of God, Jonah originally headed in the other direction to get as far away as possible. And you probably know that story. <coughs> Fleeing from God, but not because he's worried God's plan won't work, but because he's worried that it will he doesn't want the people from Nineveh to turn in repentance to the Lord and for God to spare them. It's not fair for pagans or outsiders or the unclean or foreigners to receive our blessing too. That idea kind of resonates a little in today's climate. The people of Nineveh, that horrible and terrible and wicked town, turned on a dime at God's word. And they were formed to draw closer to God's heart in repentance. The word of God worked incredibly easily, and Jonah was the reluctant messenger. It's 
hard to hear that voice. It's hard to hear that call to action sometimes, but it is there. I've experienced two times of profound hearing of God's call. One was my actual call to ministry in the fall of 1996, when I was teaching right here in Prince Edward County Public Schools. The other was when I was going to become a chaplain in the National Guard. Now, the first brought me to seminary and ministry and changed my life through some amazing experiences. The other was different. If you've never heard me speak of this call to chaplaincy in the military, it's because it never actually happened. Never materialized. What I felt as God's call on a level with that initial call was a complete failure. It led me in some difficult places of faith. But it also made me the person that I am today. The Spirit speaks all the time. The call is with us all the time. Most of the time, it's not in those huge ways, but the voice of our Lord is still calling us to life-changing service in this very moment. Being willing to reach out to someone that you've been avoiding is life-changing. Being willing to take on or give up a ministry that needs someone new is a life-changing. Resolving to grow more in your understanding and knowledge of faith is life-changing. Committing to love more like Jesus, no matter what that love looks like or where it will take place, will change your life. My big experiences with the call of God and the voice of our Lord really took years of listening. No, I had been wrestling with the sense of call since I was a child. When the voice finally came, I was ready to respond. I have a feeling it was similar with the fishermen. They spent years in appreciation of God's presence. Somehow, they were deeply spiritual men. They must have been. And I don't think <laughs> they just started when Jesus walked up. I think that's how they could make that decision as they did. God prepared them for years to hear that call. Maybe their whole lives. People have been listening here in Farmville for years. Some of our community heard the voice of Jesus inviting them to feed our neighbor, and faces and other food ministries were born. Some of our community heard the call to provide affordable housing in our community, and Habitat was established here. Some of our community needed to provide a future and training for special needs people, and STEPS was born. Some of our community heard the call to provide medical attention to the most at risk, and the free clinic happened. Some of our community felt the need to care for our older population, and Piedmont Senior Resources and Meals on Wheels came into being. Some of our community heard the voice to create greater community, and Farmville Cares was born. Ministry after ministry, some religious, some secular, have all come into being because individuals felt the need to act for the good of their neighbor. Just imagine how much good, how much life-changing work has been done through the willing hands and the listening ears. In other words, in all of these ministries, if they all disappeared, if all of these ministries suddenly vanished, what would our community look like? Tremendously different. Everything that we feel inclined to try or to need to do does not come from the voice of the Spirit. We also hear, we are here. We are here to help one another. We're here to help each other listen with more loving and faithful hearts. 
That's where the voice of God's Spirit will lead us. God's call is right here for us in this new year, here for us all. And I am honestly looking forward to how we will listen to the Spirit and how we will grow together. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. We turn now, friends, to our opportunity to respond with the Apostles' Creed found on page 35 of the hymnal. Join with me, please, if you will, by rising, and let us claim the faith that's been passed down to us through the ages. As a confessional church, we are bold to believe what, my friends? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn, friends, 182, I heard the voice of Jesus say. to, she's in the Brantley Wing at the Moore Center now in 127. Um, 
So keep her in your prayers as she recovers and gets uh, strengthened to go back um, into Brookview. Also, um, Debbie Mount has asked for prayers, and especially, and she struggles with some things these days. Um, keep her in your hearts as well. Um, we have certainly plenty of folks to remember. Um, are there anybody, too many in particular that we want to raise today? Well, friends, keeping in mind uh, difficult situations around the world, on our doorstep, and in faraway places, keeping in mind our brothers and sisters who are struggling in this very moment, let us share in the love of God through prayer. <coughs> God of life and love, speak to us in resurrection tones. Speak to us in refrains that pierce the darkness with the holy light of your truth. Your glory shook the pillars of the earth and opened death's tomb. The movement of your word in history through the prophets rolled that stone away. Your faithfulness brought women to an empty tomb out of respect and decency and love. Your love brought Jesus back to us all. Your love gave us the Christ. Speak to us songs of life. Sing to the hearts who are hurting in this hour. Sing to them of your healing, transforming, redeeming spirit. Sing to those who have become your hands and feet of healing. Sing to the hearts of, in your service. Comfort your children who are hurting and sick. Comfort your broken and lonely children. Comfort your caregivers and those entrusted to their care. Thank you for the evidences of your song in our times of darkness. Fill us in body, mind, and spirit with your expressed glory and show us your goodness in the lives of those that are hurting. Speak to us with your hands of service. Work your ministry across your people as you build up greater expressions of your living love. Give us the boldness and creativity to reach out in expressions of mission and goodness and welcome. Open our hands to embrace in hospitality. We are particularly mindful of the service of those who shepherd your children. May their lives continue to know support and thankfulness and collaboration from all of us. May we cherish this gift of love and growth. Speak to us in the living word, in Jesus, the living one. Show us more and more what it means to be one body, one community, one family, one people, one church, one kingdom, one priesthood, one spiritual house built upon our Lord. Show us Jesus in our eating and our drinking as, uh, as your communion. Show us Jesus in our common life when we leave this time of worship and we threaten to forget your forever claim on our lives. Show us in the face of the other, the stranger and our enemy. Show us Jesus and hold our gaze. Show us, O oh God, as we seek to speak the truth of your service to those who are charged as our leaders. Speak your strength and compassion to those who protect us and work for our safety and welfare. Speak your grace to the old and the young. Speak your goodness to families. Open our mouths, our lives, our hands, and our hearts. And open our minds to being your witness, your living, constant witness to the Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray, and in whose name we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but in the rest of evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of our life. Amen. We also continue in prayer, friends, as we hold before God our offerings, whatever they may be. If you've not already done so and would like to, you're welcome to leave something in one of the plates at any of the exits. Um, just no small children. as we offer to God the best that we have, for the glory of God, the use of God, and the blessing of our neighbor. Let us pray for the offerings with the prayer and the bulletin, friends. Loving God, who has called us to love, we bring these gifts to you, not because we have to, but because we can. Not to move you, but to move our hearts toward you. 
Stir these offerings in our lives to your love. In Christ we pray. Amen. And I invite you to join with me in rising for the doxology. of Jesus himself. Friends, may peace be with you, brothers and sisters, and love with faith in God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. May this love inspire us, challenge us, and move us to be the very body of Christ in this community that you and I are called to be. Amen and amen.